Welcome to another episode of Book Covers DIY. Since our last Reese's Book Club inspired book cover tutorial was so popular, I thought we'd do another inspired by video today. Our inspiration for today's book cover comes from Reese's Book Club's August pick, Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. I'm going to show you how we can take inspiration from this simple watercolor floral design and make something completely different. You'll see what I mean. Let's get started. So here we are on canva.com, uh, the free website we use to design all of our book covers. So once you register and log in, you'll be taken to a homepage that looks similar to this. Uh, you should be able to see book cover listed in that menu. If not, you can just come right up to the top and type book cover into your search bar. It'll take you over to the book cover templates page. But today we are going to be starting from scratch. So I'm going to come up to the top and click on the first option, create a blank book cover. It's going to take us over to our design area. So the first thing I want to do is to take a look at our inspiration, which comes from uh, Reese'sBookClub.com. Uh, this month's pick is right here. It is Tom Lake, a novel by Ann Patchett. And we can also see a larger, more detailed image if we click on the complete list of Reese's Book Club picks. And it will be the first selection right here. So I'm going to show you how we are going to take inspiration from this and make our own uh, book cover. All right, so here we are back on Canva. The first thing I want to do is to find a floral background for our book. I'm going to come over here to the left toolbar and I'm going to click on elements. And right here, I'm going to search watercolor flowers. There's one right there, watercolor flowers. I have options I can look through graphics. Uh, these are going to be more cutout designs. So let me click so you can see all. So you can see a lot of these are kind of cut out flowers. So I think for today I want to go to photo. So I'm going to click this next option right here. So you can see some of them have a little crown in the corner and when you hover over it you see the word pro. That means those are available with the pro version of Canva. Uh, I will put a link in the description box below if you want to try out the free trial of Canva Pro. Or if not and you want to filter those out you can come right here to this filter selection and then you can come down here to the price and select free. Once you click off to the side, you're going to see that we have removed all of those with Canva Pro. I'm going to undo that since I do have Canva Pro. All right, so let's go through here and just find something we like. Uh, I kind of want something similar to this, something a little bit messy like this. Okay, I kind of like this one as well. So we have the watercolor flowers. So I like, kind of like these right here. These are kind of busy. I'm, I'm looking for something that's kind of busy like that. Okay, so let's kind of move these aside and see what we have here. These are nice, but I think they're going to be too pale, too light. They don't really, uh, I want something very eye-catching that, that'll grab someone's attention. So I'm going to, see this one right here? I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on that one and then uh, there should be a little trash can that appears to delete that. And you can see this one's in the back. I want to see what it looks like fully. I can click on it and then come up here to position. And I'm going to change the tab to layers. And I want to bring that one. See, it's got a purple box around it. I'm going to bring it all the way to the top. And that will lay it on top. So I'm just going to kind of stretch it and get an idea of what it would look like. Uh, not too great. So I'm going to delete that one. Let's do the same thing with this one in the back. Here it is. Let's bring it to the front. Kind of get some idea. I'm going to see I'm just grabbing the corner and stretching it out to see what that might look like. I don't feel like it's uh, inspired enough by this book. So I'm going to delete that one as well. Okay, and then we have a few more here. Let's try this one and stretch that out. Let's see, I think the flowers are getting too big. Okay, yeah, when you stretch this one, it's a really beautiful cover. Look at that. But I want to stick with the smaller flowers, uh, similar to uh, our inspiration. Okay, so I'm going to delete that one. So now we have these two. I really like this one. I, like, I really like the way the color is bold and bright. So there's that one. And then there's this one. Let me bring this one to the top. Mm, I like that one as well. Let's see what that would look like. Okay, I like both of these, but if I have these side by side, the one that's instantly going to catch my eye is this one with the 
reds and pinks. So I'm going to go with that one for today. All right, so I'm going to delete this blue and green one. So now that we have our background design, normally I would just stretch it to fill in the whole book, but I don't like that the flowers get so large. I want the flowers to remain small, so I'm going to leave it back to the size it originally was, sort of square. Uh, in a minute, I'll show you how we can duplicate it to fill in the sides and the top area. But first, I want to make some adjustments to this image. I don't want to leave it um, just as is. So I'm going to click on the image, and then I'm going to get some options up here. This first one says Edit Image. I'm going to click on that, and then you can see our toolbox changed. I want to come down here to Photogenic, and I'm going to click on See All. Okay, so here is our image right now. It says None. We have no filters on it. And as you can see below that, we have a lot of filters that we can choose from. It's going to change how it appears. So we can kind of just go through here and see if there's any that we like each time we add a filter. Uh, for instance, let me click on this Bali and you can see how it sort of took out the pinks. So I'm just going to try to find one that I really like. Try this mist. I want the red and pinks to be a little bit bolder than they are uh, in the original. Okay, I think I'm going to choose Elder because this Elder, it brings out the yellow flowers, but it also adds a little bit of uh, yellow into the background. So it's more of a vintage look and it's not so stark white. Okay, so I like this Elder filter. So I just need to come down here and click Apply. Okay, so now that we have adjusted our image, now we can duplicate it. So I'm going to click on the image and right above it, I'll get a small toolbar. I'm going to click on duplicate. All right, so now I'm just going to bring it straight up over to this blank area up at the top and it should fit just like a puzzle if you bring it down uh, right about there. You can see the flowers fit perfectly with the flowers below. Now I'm going to click off to the side. So now we have our background and it should be pretty seamless so you can't see any uh, line there. Okay, so now uh, we need to, let's glance back at our inspiration. This, this looks like sort of a fabric or paper background. I'm going to come back over here to our elements and we're still, uh, we still have watercolor flowers in the search box. I'm going to click on the X to clear that. Okay, and I'm going to type in torn paper. Let's see what we get. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go to photos this time. Okay, there's some torn paper options, although I want it torn on all four sides, not just the bottom or just the top. Oh, okay, I like this one right here. So let me click on that one. Okay, and then we have magic recommendations if we want to see other options similar to that one. You can click on see all, and there's a bunch of options here. Uh, for right now, I'm going to stick with this one and see how it turns out. So I'm going to bring this up here. And then I know it does not look good. It doesn't match at all. But I'm going to show you how we're going to change that. So we're going to come over here to Edit Image. And let's click on that. And we should have some our filters and things over in our toolbox. Let's go down to Duotone and click on See All. Now I want to choose, let's see how, we'll try out Cherry and Fuchsia. So here's Cherry. Okay, that looks pretty great. Uh, let's see what Fuchsia looks like. Oh, that looks pretty good as well. Okay, I think we'll go back to Cherry and then we'll make some adjustments with that. Okay, so let's start with this Cherry and click Apply. Okay, and then this time I want us to go right below Duo Tone and click on Photogenic See All. So even though we chose Cherry, we can still make some adjustments. Uh, so let's try out some of these filters. So here's Belvedere. Okay, that Loon is a nice one. These seem to make it more orange looking. Oh, that Rustique looks pretty good. Elder again, which is the one we chose for the background. Okay, I think I like Rustique. Uh, I'm going to click on Apply. All right, so we have our background and our sort of vintage paper. Uh, so now we're going to go and add some text to this. So we're going to come back over here to our toolbar on the left and we can click on our third selection, which is text. I'm just going to go to the top here and click on add a heading. It's going to place a text box over here on our canvas. 
I'm going to bring that up. And let's see, we need to think of a title for this book, a fake title. I'm just going to call it The Lake instead of Tom Lake. And now we need to change the color and the font. First off, I'm going to start with the color. To change the color, make sure your, your text box is selected. You'll have a purple box around it. Then you're going to come up here to this A with a rainbow bar beneath it. That is your text color. As you can see over here on the left, you're going to have all of these color palettes. Uh, these are my own brand colors, but if you scroll down, you'll see default colors. You're also going to see something uh, in the middle called photo colors. Uh, Canva does this really cool thing where every time you either select one of their photos, like for instance the flowers here, or upload your own photo, it's going to create a color palette from that photo. So here, right here is our uh, background and it has taken all of these colors from the background. And this is from the vintage paper and it's taken all the different shades of reds that you're going that you see throughout this paper. So it makes it really easy to match your text or anything with the background. For instance, if I wanted to change this to maybe this gold color, I would click on that and you can see it change there. Here's a lighter gold and a cream. This is the cream from the background. So another thing you can do is you can come up to the top you can click on this rainbow box with the plus sign, click in there, and then here you're going to have your uh, sliders where you can change it to, you know, uh, for instance, we'll put it over here in the yellow area, and then you can adjust your shade. So as you can see, as I'm moving it, look over here at the lake and you can see it is changing to whatever shade uh, I have placed it on. Another thing you can do is click on the eyedropper tool and then place it over anything in your design and it will match that. So let's see, I'm gonna place it over the yellow, the brightest part of the yellow flowers, and you can see it changed to match that. I actually want it to match the background, so I'm gonna place it over that area and click again. And so now it matches the background. Okay, so I'm liking this color so far. I might change it later, we'll see. But now we need to choose a font because I don't like this default font, which is Canvas Sans. I'm gonna come up here and click the down arrow. Now the toolbox changes to all of our font selections. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll through here and I'm looking for sort of a tall, skinny uh, font here. So that one's there, it's a little bit too. I also don't want it bold. As you can see, these are bold. So I'm gonna undo that. That looks pretty similar to this one. Look at the lake. So I'm gonna try out a few more fonts, but I will definitely keep that one in mind. So let's just kind of go through here and see if there's anything else we like. Okay, I also like this Laura. Okay, so after going through a bunch of different fonts, I went back to the original one, which is this uh, Arapi. I wanna make it larger. To do that, I can either grab one of the corners and stretch it out, or I can come up here to the font size and make some changes there or use the plus and minus button. But I'm going to just go back to the corner, stretch it out, and I wanna center it and bring it up slightly. Okay, and it looks like for the author, um, they actually just use the same font. Uh, I'm gonna do that as well. Uh, we can either go over here and do add a heading and start all over again, but instead, to make it much easier, I'm just gonna click on the lake, and then right above it, click on duplicate. I'm going to bring that second text box down and let's come up with a fake author name instead of Ann Patchett. Uh, let's get my Pam Thatcher. Okay, so of course that is way too large. So again, I'm just going to grab the corner and drag it in instead of out. And then I'm going to move the whole box over and center it and lower it. So now we need to write a novel, and for that, I do want a different font and color. So I'm gonna come back over here to our text area, and this time I'm going to click on add a subheading. Uh, we're gonna get another text box here. I need to bring that up, and let's go ahead and, I'm just gonna write a novel. So I'm gonna click in there, a novel, and I wanna change the color. 
So I'm going to come back up here to this A with a text color. It has defaulted to the color we're already using, but I want to change that. I think I'm going to see what this gold looks like. I like the yellow, but that one seems a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go over here to add a new color, click the plus, and take our eyedropper tool. And let's go into our yellow flowers and find the highlight or this lightest, brightest yellow and click in there. Okay, much better. Let me see how that looks. Okay, that stands out much better. Let's bring that to the center. All right, now we need to choose a font because this is way too plain. So we'll come up here to Canvas Hands, click the down arrow, and now let's go through our fonts. And we want something sort of italicized and cursive since we have this sort of block, basic block font. So now we can just kind of scroll through here, see if anything, you know, it is too small and we're not able to see. So let me stretch that out. Okay, that's a nice font there. Buffalo. Okay, I like that one, but let's keep looking. I like that one. Uh, Nick. Oh, I like this one. It came. That's very similar. Well, not the N, but the other letters are pretty similar to the original, the way they joined together. Okay, I think I like this one. This one's called McCainley, and it was one of the free options. All right, so uh, I, I'm going to make it smaller now. So I'm going to grab the corner and drag it in. And then now I need to center it. Okay, so to center it, I can you know move it over until I see the solid line, but I want to show you another way uh, you can center something. Whether it's an image or font, you can click on it. Then you're going to come up here to position. This time, make sure you are on the Arrange tab, and then if you go down to the midsection, it'll say Align to Page. You want to click on Center. Once I click on Center, watch this jump over to the center. All right, so it centered it for you. Okay, I think a novel needs to be slightly smaller, so I'm going to drag that in again, and I'm going to click on Position and Center to make sure it is centered. We're just about finished, but I, I think I want to bring all of the text and this vintage paper upward slightly. To do that I could do it one at a time and try to line everything back up but I, I, there's a much simpler way to do this uh, and it's by grouping it all together. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the paper background. Make sure that you just have the vintage paper selected not the actual background. And then I'm going to hold down shift and click on the lake, hold down shift a novel, and hold down shift Pam Thatcher. And then I'm going to get a new uh, option here on this small toolbar that says group. I'm going to click on that and you're going to see it groups them all together inside one box. So now I can move them all at the same time. Uh, if I ever wanted to ungroup them, I just click that and it separates them again. But since I want to move them all upward slightly because it was just a little too low, because I noticed the original, it actually goes all the way up to the top, but I kind of don't like that. I kind of like having this sort of a top border. There's nothing wrong with it, it just it looks a little odd to me to have that for this design. Uh, now if you wanted to, you can also bring the design this far down or even to the center point like this. And you can see that looks just as nice as well. So there are a lot of ways you can take a design like this and make it your own. I'm just going to undo that and place it back where it was. Okay, so now we're ready to download it. Uh, first, let's come up here and name our design. Uh, let's call it the Lake Book Cover. And then we're going to click on Share, Download. Uh, it's going to default to PDF Standard because it thinks you want to print it. Um, I'm just showing this to you today, so I'm going to click on PNG and Download. It's only going to take a few seconds and then I will click on that and pull it up side by side. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we have our inspiration, Tom Lake, a novel by Ann Patchett. Uh, and it has our watercolor, you know, flowers and our sort of vintage uh, paper background. So this was our inspiration for today. And then here we have our version. We have our, you know, vintage watercolor floral background. Uh, we have our title. We used a similar font. It's slightly bolder than the original. And then right here we have a novel, uh, also a similar font, but slightly different. And then of course our version is bolder and brighter and definitely captivating and eye-catching with these bright bold colors. So I hope today's video helped you to see that you can take inspiration from other books or movie posters or things like that and make a completely different version that's all your own. 
So I hope you enjoyed today's Inspired By video. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below and feel free to suggest some other books you'd like to see me create similar covers of. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to update you about future videos. So thanks again for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, bye-bye.